This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. I'm mostly done, but uh, there's still a significant bit left. Can I finish it in, um, 15 minutes? Because <laughs> I'll probably end this... I'll, I'll probably have to end the stream in around 15 minutes or so, because... I, there are still some things I need to do, and I need to make sure my dinner will be ready. And also, I'm having a, uh... Well, I'm not having... I'm attending a virtual baby shower tonight, so... Gotta end it fairly soon. We won't end it here. We'll keep going for a little bit more. Not that my stay had produced any improvements so far. If anything, it was the opposite. The nightmares still tormented me relentlessly, and my treatment had pro progressed to medication in the IV tube. Through the tube, the nutrients I needed to survive were pumped directly into my veins. Through powerful sleeping pills, they induced temporary periods of oblivious rest. It felt less like I was living and more like I was being kept alive. One day, this stagnant routine was disrupted slightly. I learned that I had been given permission for an outing as part of my new phase of my treatment. Uh-oh, are they gonna walk back to the park where it happened? I was given permission to leave the hospital, escorted by one of the nurses, on the condition that we stayed well away from both my house and the site of the accident. Okay, okay, good, 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 good. I'm like, they better not be walking her back to the park! Because <laughs> that will be bad. With no particular des destination in mind, we walked aimlessly around the town. Unlike the hospital, which was constantly filled with a sterile, antiseptic scent, this town smelled of the season, of people living their ordinary lives. In the distance, I could hear the chattering of grade schoolers on their way home. For the first time in weeks, I wondered vaguely how my friends at school were doing. The change of pace wasn't unpleasant, but my feelings were as dark as and clouded as ever. I knew all too well that the physical relief of this moment was only temporary. Unless the doctor drugged me into unconsciousness, I'd see that dream again. The moment of the accident would flash before my eyes over and over, and my body would react as if it were, in reality, twitching in my bed. If I kept, if I wept in the dream, I woke up with my eyes swollen and red. If I screamed stop in the dream, I woke up with my throat rubbed raw. But worst of all, when the loop finally came to an end, my parents would raise their blood-covered faces from the road and curse me, an incessant, bitter rain of hateful words from which I was powerless to escape. Dad died instantly, and Mom lost consciousness soon after the accident. That last part of the dream was fake. I did understand that rationally, but every morning I awoke to find the burden of guilt resting slightly heavier on my mind. The border between reality and that cruel fiction grew indistinct. I felt entirely possible that the horrible nightmare would stay with me for the rest of my life. I had committed the sin of disobedience. That dream was my punishment for treating my parents cruelly when they tried to celebrate my birthday with me. That's adult Sachi's voice. It didn't matter how many times I apologized in my dreams. It didn't matter how much suffering those nightmares brought me. This guilt won't simply disappear. Uh, can we get Piglet to fix our dreams for us, please and thank you? <laughs> <laughs> it had already grown very nearly unendurable. My heart and mind were on the verge of breaking outright, and still I couldn't find anything close to an answer. And as I whispered that plea to myself, I noticed a parent and child walking slowly down the sidewalk towards us. A mother, her face clearly troubled, and her young son yanking rudely at her hand. That sounds like an offshoot of the terrible TV show Tuna Fish Man, Poultry Poltergeist. Big oof! The moment I heard those words, it was as if though an icy hand had seized my heart. <laughs> the mother and child passed by my side, their expressions completely transformed into smiles. 
oof. Big oof for Sachi. It was actually the drunk driver's fault, but... I muttered those words under my breath, as if to persuade myself they were true. And in the next moment, I thought I could hear her a switch being flipped inside my head. It's all fitting together. And now we get the happy music! After that episode, my body underwent a mysterious change. I went to bed that night without any sleeping pills, but nevertheless reached morning without seeing the nightmare. Since that dreams began, falling asleep without medication had always been a night of terrible suffering. This sudden exception to the rule surprised me greatly. But I didn't really have any idea why the nightmares would have stopped all of a sudden. Maybe I had just happened to pull a lucky straw this once. As it turned out, however, these worries were unjustified. The nightmares grew steadily less frequent, and my physical condition improved as well. Observing these changes happily, a nurse told me to keep it up. Don't let those bad dreams come back, by way of encouragement. I promptly focused on engraving those words into my mind. Oh, no, Asachi. Every time I whispered the mantra to myself, a voice rang out in my head. You mustn't be disobedient. A good girl does what she's told. A bad girl doesn't. This is slowly turning into a horror story, by the way. And then the voice fell silent, that scene flashed through my mind for the briefest of instants. As a warning. A reminder. I never ever wanted to feel that way again. And so I was determined to become a good girl. And that's why she don't refuse any requests. If I'm a good girl, I won't lose anything. If I'm a good girl, maybe... Mommy and Daddy will forgive me someday. <laughs> Jeez. Over time, my mind was filled with those words. When someone asked me to finish my dinner, I cleaned up my plate, even if it meant fighting back nausea to stuff food in my stomach. Before of all, I was even capable of willing myself into unconsciousness if someone told me to go to sleep right after lights out. I don't know if this game is jumps. Is <laughs> This game is... I don't think it's supposed to be a horror game. I think it's just supposed to be a dating sim with... But a little more so than that. But this is also blind. I have... Oh. So I really can't say. Maybe this turns into a horror game a la Doki Doki. I don't really know. But I have been told by people that it's a very, a very dark game, so... I guess just be braced for them? <laughs> Whenever I said those words and nodded my assent, the nurses called me a good girl with smiles on their faces. And whenever I heard that phrase, I could feel my sin growing ever so lightly, slightly lighter, my sense of self ever so slightly weaker. Oh boy, this is... This is... It's like a train wreck. It's... I want so badly to look away, but I can't, because it's just so fascinating. It took some time afterward, but eventually I was discharged from the hospital, conditional on my return for furrow regular checkups. The reason, naturally, was that my painful nightmares had grown extremely rare, and my sleep and eating habits had returned to normal. The rapid and dramatic improvement in my symptoms did quite surprise the doctor and nurses, but I'm fairly sure the adults convinced themselves my little trip outside the hospital for a change of pace had simply succeeded beyond their expectations. Well, that's kind of true. However, the doctors did think it was best for me to leave my hometown and the many painful memories it held behind. It was decided that I would live with my uncle Akihiro and his wife at their home in Niigata. I'd never visited my uncle's house even once until the day I moved there, but I didn't feel any anxiety about my new life in a new land. At least she had family to be with. If, if her mom and dad were her only family members, that would be so sucky. <laughs> I did know that my, aunt and, uh, my uncle and auntie were kind people, and above all else, I had a clearly defined path to follow. No matter what my circumstances, I was determined to be a good girl. After all, my new conviction had virtually cured me of those unendurable nightmares. 
I'm also... Don't worry, I'm also bad with jump scares. So, we can get scared together, and I'll try to have funny reactions to them. Yeah, this is... This is getting fascinating. Since Uncle Akihiro was kind enough to carefully prepare everything beforehand, the move went off without a hitch. It was decided that I'd transfer into a nearby school after my first week in Niigata. As it turned out, it was a modestly sized school with a fairly small student body. I was the first transfer student in recent memory, and received a significant amount of curious gazes as a result. Heard she got caught up in something nasty. I don't know why I'm giving them these voices. <laughs> uh, didn't somebody say she got bullied really badly at her last school? At times I heard such rumors whispered in the hallways. <laughs> that was not a whisper. <laughs> hey, I heard she got caught up in something nasty. It's like, oh, we, when we gossip at this school, we just yell it out loud. Not that any of it bothered me in the slightest. I was entirely focused on making up for the time I'd lost in the hospital. I hadn't even touched a textbook in some time. A good girl does well in school. So as to keep myself from diverging with that image, I threw myself fervently into my classes, filling every waking moment with study and regretting the need to sleep. <laughs> Actually, my voices weren't all that far off! <laughs> Something like that. It's okay, we're past the most horrific part of this route. Well, I kind of hope so, because <laughs> that was kind of intense what happened. <laughs> it's not the most horrific route, though. I figured. Because I literally had people, like, first couple of videos I uploaded to YouTube, I had, like, quite a few people be like, Artie, this game is super dark. Are you sure you want to play this? And, like, the first few times it happened, I'm like, yeah, whatever. After, like, the fifth person said that, I'm like, okay, is this game really that bad? <laughs> I don't know. But I also don't know if I'll do every route, so it's fine. Over time, my diligent new approach to life changed the way my classmates viewed me. By the time we advanced to the next grade, many looked at me with respect in their eyes. In addition, on the theory that a good girl helps with others, I would proactively approach those who seemed troubled and offer my assistance. Just by chasing after my ideal in this way, at some point a crowd gathered around me. As in my previous school, everyone in the class started calling me Sachan, and I made a lot of friends who'd invite me out to play. Oh, that's nice. My uncle, who'd been worried about how I'd adapt to living in this country, was very pleased by all this, and my teachers offered constant, consistent praise for my efforts in the classroom and helpful attitude. The harder I tried, the nicer everyone was. And I tried very hard indeed. The compliments and smiling faces reminded me of the happiest days of my life. When my parents had been kind to me, I grew steadily more convinced that my new way of thinking was correct. Uh, I can ha here's I can also tend to handle dark stuff. Here's the thing, though. Dark stuff in a book, I'm like, no problem. If it's just reading text. If there are images and sound effects with it, though, it might get difficult for me at times. I'm hoping because it's a visual novel, it won't be as bad as like a really dark movie, but we don't know, so we'll just have to wait and see. But such universal, unreserved affection for good people doesn't last beyond childhood. As if to warn me of that fact, when I advanced to the next level of school, I found the emotionally charged malice characteristic of adolescence waiting for me. Uh-oh. After a few months, I've gotten thoroughly settled in at my new school. Once again, I had attracted a crowd of friendly faces. Here's the thing. In the earlier school years, I feel like if you're super smart, people are like, Oh, that's so cool! You're awesome! And then in the later ones, it'll be like, You're super smart. Oh, I'm, I got my eye on you. Well, at least at, like, <laughs> super competitive school. <laughs> For the most part, they asked me to see my... They always asked to see my homework for assistance in some extracurricular activity or help with their studies. As I reliably satisfied these requests, the number of people who approached me steadily increased. Apparently, there's this super talented saint in Class 1C. Such rumors spread across the school, and I became something of a minor celebrity. And in time, I began to encounter those who found that irksome. Among them, a girl named Hitomi Nakano from my class. Oh, not Hitomi. Most labeled her a delinquent, and she kept herself largely aloof from the rest of the class. So it came as something of a surprise when one day she suddenly called out to me. Uh-oh, I, I see where this is going. It began with that trivial favor. 
No different from those I'd performed for countless others. But Hitomi Nakano repeated that request every time it was her turn to clean the classroom. Of course, I continued to readily accept. And one day after this pattern had continued for some time, everyone's going to start doing it. Are we going to have to hit Omi? <laughs> what a comeback, Sachi! その I don't like this girl. <laughs> why is she, why is she, she just being a butt for literally no reason? Oh, Although I accepted Nakano-san's request, she didn't seem particularly pleased. In fact, she clicked her tongue in disgust and stalked right out of the classroom. What was she so angry about? Thinking the matter over, I took out over a supply of cleaning implements for my locker. And just as directed, I made my way around the school, cleaning the windows. After our classroom, I moved on to the other first-year rooms, the hallway and the faculty room, making steady progress. Once the school building was closed, however, my pace was slowed somewhat by the need to hide from the patrolling teachers. Nevertheless, I persevered with my task. Even after the sun fell, I continued wiping in dogged silence. And her uncle and aunt are going to be super worried about her. My arms quickly grew heavy from the sustained effort of reaching up to the clean the higher windows, and after a few hours, my shoulders were screaming with pain. Even so, I kept my hands moving. I had my directions, and I had to obey them. My personal circumstances were irrelevant. My body might ache or suffer injury, but neither mattered so long as it could move. If movement were to become impossible, I would simply reassess the situation and attempt to find an alternate means to accomplish my task. At the moment, wiping all the windows in the school clean took priority above all else. When she found me in the hallway the next morning, still wiping windows, Hitomi Nakano's jaw dropped open. Anta. なにって。<笑> For a brief moment, her eyes went wide, and in the next, she roared with laughter. <laughs> Never mind, she's still a tool. Alright, it's tool time. <laughs> this girl sucks! <laughs> Oh, I no 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 no. わかった。いや、パリね。じゃあ、これから私に対しては敬語を使うこと。ですか、さ。それから私が何か命令をした時の返事は、はい、わかりました。Barf. <laughs> Did her aunt and uncle just not notice she didn't return from school that day? 
I didn't particularly hesitate at the prospect of becoming a slave. That's a problem! <laughs> if that was what she wanted for me, and if it was within my power to play that role, I had no reason to object. Really? And so, having assumed the position of Hitomi Nakano's obedient minion, carrying out her orders became the cultural element of my new daily routine. Is this going to include bullying other people? It better not. Wow, this is long! I can't stop now. <laughs> have I played or considered playing the Danganronpa series? Um, I have had those recommended to me. It's not out of the question, but I, I'm going to try to keep the amount of M-rated games I played to a minimum, I think. I can't quite remember how many times we repeated this exchange. It happened too often for me, to be sure. My more common duties involved completing her homework by proxy, helping her cheat on tests, and arranging cruel pranks against those she disliked. Yeah, so basically we're becoming a terrible person. There were other requests as well. Every once in a while, she'd call for me in the middle of the night simply to mock me for actually showing up. After laughing with her friends, she would send me right back home. But that was all right with me. I was her slave, so all I needed to concern myself with was executing her commands. No matter how difficult the orders she gave me, though, care through careful thought and diligent effort, I was always able to find a method of carrying them out. Okay, this girl, what's-her-face, is riding the magic tool bus right now. When I succeeded, her mood would often improve. On occasion, she even offered a few words of praise for her good girl. They're, they're mocking, though. But more than anything else, simply obeying someone's instructions was pleasant in itself. While executing her orders, there was no need to think about anything else. The reason for those orders, the consequences of successfully carrying them out, anything and everything else was totally irrelevant. In those moments, and those moments alone, the burden of guilt I carried with me was lifted from my shoulders, and the image I wanted to erase from my mind more than anything else stayed safely buried away. Therefore, there was nothing wrong about this. Th that's not true. A good girl does what she's told. I believed absolutely in those words. For me, they had become a kind of faith. However, not everyone saw things the same way. After about two years as her slave, my master began to show some signs of discontentment with our arrangement. When I answered her orders with a prompt yes, certainly, and a nod, I could see a flash of irritation in her eyes. Perhaps as a result, I soon noticed that those orders had begun to escalate in scale and difficulty, and when I returned to report my success, she'd respond only with a displeased grunt. Eventually, I asked whether I'd done something to offend her. Well, that's what happens when you get someone else to do everything for you. You don't exactly feel good about yourself. And that was her, an admittedly rather irrational, answer. Naturally, I then inquired whether I should fail every so often, but... This inspired only a more pronounced scowl. あんたに最後の命令を出してあげる。最後の命令。そう。2週間後にある中間テスト。what? I don't think you understand how this works. <laughs> like, f find them and shred them? I don't think that she's able to do something like that. どうなの?やれるの?はい。私はいい子ですから。言ったわね。いい。一度やるって言ったんだから。絶対やんなさいよ。it all sucks. I know I've said that like ten times now, but this is I, I'm saying it multiple times to emphasize just how much this girl sucks. <laughs> From the moment I nodded my head, it was perhaps all but decided that I would end up in Mahama Academy. When she asked me if I was up for it, I heard a voice screaming, DON'T! From some corner of my mind. But soon enough, as the image of that day began to flicker its own warning before my eyes, that voice of caution was obliterated without a trace. Always listen to your conscience, kids. There was nothing left to stop me. How are you going to, like, do this? For the next two days, I frantically racked my brains in search of a method to get rid of the scheduled midterm tests. How about stealing the tests before they can copy them? No, even if I were to find the originals, the tests would be recreated. At most, I would earn a brief delay. In that case... How about copying the tests secretly and bringing her the answers? 
No, while that might ensure her a perfect score on her exams, the tests themselves would be held as usual. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you understand that this is really kind of impossible. The more ideas I ran through, the more I realized the enormous difficulty of the task at hand. My focus grew, my focus grew slowly more intense and obsessive. My thoughts ran in circles. To make matters worse, as the delay of the test grew inex inexorably closer, I began to see the familiar nightmares I had fought behind me. And so, driven slowly but surely into desperation, I finally arrived at my conclusion. I am still going because this is so interesting and I want to finish the flashback and I'm close to the end. Oh! No, Sachi! No, 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 no. That's a big bad idea. Sachi, what is going what is wrong with you? The moment I spoke those words, my ears filled with a high-pitched, almost nostalgic buzzing, and my consciousness was shrouded in fog. What is When I came to my senses, I was standing inside my school. At my feet were a pile of kerosene cans. What the frig? You're gonna burn the school to the ground? <laughs> Whoa! The same sort my uncle stockpiled as fuel for our heaters. Presumably I had carried them from my house to this building over the course of numerous round trips. And indeed, my arms and shoulders were throbbing with agony. Oh, this is not good. The situation was clear enough. Moving as though possessed, I emptied all the cans around the building in what felt like minutes, ignoring the protests of my exhausted body. And in the end, I stood in my classroom and set the fire. Okay, this... That escalated uh, real fast. I, Nick, I was planning on finishing almost two hours ago, but it got so interesting and I didn't want to leave a cliffhanger. The instant I... Oh my gosh. The instant I dropped my match into the kerosene, flames sprouted up as though I'd flipped a switch on the stove top. The fire spread rapidly down the fuse of oil and into the hallway. In the blink of an eye, the fire spread and grew. Feeding off the wooden walls and desks, consuming the paper textbooks and cloth bags my classmates had left behind, the flames danced before my eyes. Even from a distance, I felt their heat on my skin. Just as I observed that it was becoming slightly painful to breathe with heated air, the shrill sound of the fire alarm began to resound throughout the building. The classroom I had studied in only yesterday was consumed in a literal sea of fire. And yet, even as a part of my world vanished before my eyes, I felt nothing in particular. Ah, look at it burn. What a pretty fire. The thoughts running through my mind were nothing but the disinterested impressions of a casual spectator. Having determined that it would be impossible to stay in this place any longer, I carefully exited the classroom for the nearest window. As I lowered myself under the grass outside, I could hear the sound of distant sirens. How far would the flames reach before that fire engine arrived? How much damage before they could extinguish the blaze? No, it no longer mattered. The midterm exams would doubtlessly be cancelled regardless. I carried out my orders. I did what I was told. I was still a good girl. Yes, good girls burn down schools, apparently. Yes. And as long as I'm a good girl, nothing else matters. Okay! We finally can save! We finally finished the flashback. Wow! Okay! <laughs> I do not normally stream Grisea this long, but I had to finish that flashback. It was so captivating, and that was my, that's was my that been my favorite part of the game thus far. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll try to get these VODs up on YouTube before the next stream next week. I always stream Saturdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but if, if I have to change that, I will try to let my Discord know. Thank you all for joining in. It was awesome having you all here, and this is a, this is a very interesting game. I'm really enjoying this. Uh, <laughs> I guess I, I'll bid you all adieu here. Hope you have a great rest of your weekend, and God bless.